Um, again, the reason why um, I decided to deliver the session, actually, it's not the first time um, I run a session on professional development for English language teachers. And what I mean by that, um, again, I'm not, I'm not going to talk today about content, but I'm going to talk about how you should be uh, pursuing your professional development. And I believe that, that this is a very important topic. Um, um, and I talked about it many times before, but I believe that from, from a time to another, it's very important also to talk to people and new generations and also people who are thinking about how should I pursue my professional development? Um, uh, what should I do now? Um, how do I start? You know, how do I become an English teacher if, if even I'm not an English teacher and what I should do exactly for that purpose? So, and uh, again, um, because of, you know, how I started my own, my own career, it, it wasn't very easy for me. And, and to be honest, um, I wanted someone to deliver a session like this for me um, when I graduated from the faculty. But, but actually, um, I didn't know what to do with my professional development for nine years. Can you imagine that? Because I was in a small town and um, a not for me, and I, I didn't know what to do. I had, I had to depend. Um, on myself to to find out um, which courses I should take, um, um, what I should do, and again, and this uh, made me start my professional development um, very late. Like I started in my thirties, uh, I started my whole professional development journey in two thousand and thirteen. And the reason why I'm doing this is that I don't want people to be in the same position. I want I wanted someone to give me advice. And this is actually what I'm going to do today. Out of my experience um, and um, what, what I've been through. So um, I hope that you might leave this session um, with something in mind. Okay. And um, I hope that I can benefit you uh, somehow. Um, uh, hopefully, right? So now again, let me start, let me, let me just share a bit of a presentation with you here, just one second. And again, my friends, um, as you see, here is the title um, of our uh, session, From Procrastinating, Procrastinator to Professional. Um, and again, I mean, that's what we want to do. We want to start our um, uh, professional uh, careers, we want to pursue our professional development and leave um, procrastination behind. Okay, so no need for delaying things. Uh, the earlier you start, the better, right? And people who start early uh, are people also who pick uh, the early fruits. So, um, again, so let's, my friends, um, go now to the following slide let me start by this uh, here is a quote and it goes as follows okay it says um, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest and the reason why um i put this quote at the very beginning because there was a time um in my career when i thought um you know i mean the options available for an English teacher are very limited, you know, I mean, what would I do anyway, right? All I, I, I was thinking about, let's just go deliver some private tutoring and that's it, you know, I mean, nothing is out there. So, um, but um, I was absolutely wrong because the best thing you can do to yourself is that you invest in yourself. However, it's because I wasn't very happy with the, with the type of education I received when I was at university. And I thought that um, it would continue like that. So again, this discouraged me from actually uh, continuing also my professional development. So it was something that I said, no, 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 no more. Enough is enough, you know, um, um, I don't want to study anymore. However, I mean, this is absolutely wrong. Um, and I would say the reason why the word investment is mentioned here because it, it is absolutely true. My friend, your professional development is your price in the market. Because as a teacher, we are products. 
we don't sell goods, but we sell knowledge. The more knowledge you have, the more money you are worth out there in the market. So, so this is how you should be thinking. And, 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 and this is why I'm saying that it's an investment and it is for sure. Right, so let's move now to an, an, another question here. And it, it's a very valid question. And the question uh, goes as follows. What are the reasons some teachers have for not continuing their professional development? Why some teachers don't continue their professional development? And, and there are so many reasons for that. I, I would love some of you to write some of the reasons that can come up, okay, to your minds now. Why some teachers don't um, uh, pursue the professional development? What, what are uh, the problems? Hmm. If you can write me in the chat box, oh, money, okay, wonderful, agree. Overloaded schedules, okay, fair enough. Cost, yeah, true. Um, money, burnout, yeah, 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 okay. Abilities, indeed, I agree. Um, uh, you know, finding a job, um, okay, wonderful. So a lot, okay, wonderful, wonderful opinions. Motivation, okay, wonderful. Now, uh, me, my friends, take you um, to actually six main reasons why um, many teachers don't pursue their professional development. And I would say, one, negative experience. And, 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 and to be honest, you know, I mean, um, sometimes we go through negative experience when it comes mm -hmm. to education, and this is actually, um, uh, you know, and, and this can put us off, you know, like no more. I mean, we don't need to continue our professional development anymore. You know, I mean, it, it wasn't a very um, happy experience. It happens. Um, and again, I was like that when I graduated. I hated it because I hated memorizing. There was a lot of memorizing when I was a university student. Memorize, memorize, memorize. Then you go to the exam, then you write some stuff in the exam, then you pass, and that's it. And then when I graduated and faced reality and started working in different schools and different language centers, I discovered that, oh my God, I don't know how to teach. I spent about four years, okay, and, you know, supposedly I was supposed to be, to learn how to teach during these four years, but I discovered that after graduation, I don't know how to do it. So, um, so what was that? And again, because of this negative experience, you know, uh, I stopped. Um, also, um, I had also a, a bad experience before in training, to be honest. Um, and someone told me that, okay, Shadi, you're going to receive a five day training, okay, to be a teacher trainer. Can you imagine that? This is, you know, this is comedy. Um, I swear to God, you know, someone told me that I wasn't a good teacher and someone was promise, promising me. Uh, to make me a teacher trainer. Can you imagine this? This is so funny. And in five days, oh my God, that's magic, right? So I didn't know how to teach and someone came to me and said, Dad, you're going to take this course and you would become a teacher trainer. And I paid the money. I paid 5,000 pounds for those bloody five days. And that was, you know, at the time when, you know, those five pounds were big, big thing at my time. Right, that was, you know, um, uh, you know, like um, years and years ago. And after that, uh, funny, uh, what was so funny is that the guy spent the time, okay, in these days talking about things that have nothing to do with education at all or teaching English. It was just, you know, personal stories about, you know, um, uh, swimming and diving and, you know, and, and, and other stuff, and but I can tell you that I got a certificate. I'm hiding it till now, okay? I'm not showing it to anyone because, so again, I, I, simply I was conned, and that was uh, daylight robbery. Uh, but again, that was a, a bad experience that I went through. So yeah, sometimes you're put off because of bad experience um, you might go through. And, you know, I totally agree, it happens. I would say also, 
Um, another reason why many teachers um, do not want to pursue their professional development is um, this uh, terrible um, statement down there, which is, I am perfect. You know, some people have this kind of thinking. I am perfect. Well, they, they, they think like that all the time. And there was a time uh, also in my career when I thought I was great and at the very beginning. And it's, it's, it's amazing that you feel you're great when you know nothing. And you feel you lack a lot when you really start learning. Right? It's, it's just, isn't that amazing? <laughs> right? When you know nothing, you think you're great. And when you start learning, you know, oh my God, oh my God, I lack a lot. I have, I have to keep learning day and night, you know. So, and, and again, and, 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 and this is, you know, a big piece of advice here. Please, no one is perfect, okay? Um, everybody needs to learn. All of us need to learn. I'm the first, you know. So never, never think at any time that you don't need it. Okay, because this this is this is a big illusion, um, and I lived it. I, I I used to think that okay, I am the best. I'm waiting for uh, princes uh, from Dubai uh, to send me a plane to take me immediately uh, to United Arab Emirates to to be a great teacher there. And I was doing nothing, but I was just waiting. Okay, and I was wondering why nobody is offering me a good job. <laughs> And because I thought I was great, and then these good, good jobs didn't come because I wasn't. So again, so thinking that you are perfect, that, that, that's, that's a serious problem. Negative experience, don't let negative experience, um, um, you know, puts you off training. Um, all what you need to do is that you need to be careful, okay, when you decide what to study and where. Okay, and I learned actually the hard way. Right, so another reason why people don't want to pursue their professional development, they're busy. And some of you wrote this in a chat box. Totally agree that um, as teachers, we're very busy. Like, um, I can tell you that this chair I'm sitting on right now, I entered this room 9 a.m. What can you, and I had my lunch on that desk right so i know um uh, the meaning of being busy I, I i really understand that but remember that as long as you started your career you'll be busy for the rest of your life you know that and if this is the reason why you don't continue your professional development then you need to be aware that this reason will be there forever it will not go away because this is your job. This is how you feed your family. Um, this is how you get money. So I know that. So so we know that it is impossible for this um, reason to go away. Then what is the solution? Then the solution simply is that you decide to free time, no matter what, for your professional development. Okay, because you're busy. Because you're trying to get money. Well, if you want to get more money then you need to free some time for your professional development because um, how good you are decides on how much money you will get. Okay, right. Um, now, let me move to a following point, which is money. Now, um, what do we do, um, you know, if, if, if we've got problems when it comes to money? Well, I mean, if, if everybody has problems when it comes to money on, on different levels, right? Um, and I'd say, I'll tell you exactly what I did, because I, when I started, I didn't have any money at all, okay? So, um, and, you know, um, I wanted all my life to, um, uh, to do some good courses, but I didn't have the money for that. Uh, the first decision that I, I, I took before was I wanted to do my CELTA. I said, okay, CELTA is a big course. I want to do it. Um, uh, you know, it, it's really expensive. I decided to sell my car when I sold my car um, and uh, tried to apply for a CELTA center. There was only one CELTA center in Egypt. I got rejected. 
I tried to apply again. I got rejected again. So, um, so I said, oh, my God, what, what would I do now? And of course, at this time, I thought I was a very good teacher. So I thought they um, refused me because, you know, I was too good. So I was, I was, I was you know, um, I, I completely uh, got something wrong with my mind at this time. Uh, I wasn't actually pointing any finger towards myself. It, it, I, was all, I was all the time, you know, accusing other people. Okay, but I didn't stop to think that oh, it was me and um, I should have done something about it. But finally, what I did is that I saved some money, okay, and uh, at this time I was, I used to get paid kind of 30 pounds per hour, okay. So I used, to, so I, I wasn't making that much money because I decided to leave private tutoring and free myself for teaching at language centers. I wasn't, you know, paid well at all. However, okay, what I did is that I started reading on my own because I didn't have anything else to do. Um, I started, you know, um, going and watching free webinars, okay? So that was also uh, one more thing that I did. And then while I was doing, like I didn't stop my professional development, I was reading, I was attending free workshops. And at that time, I tried to save some money from here, borrow some money from there, put this and this together, okay? Mm -hmm. Until I had what got me, you know, joy in the first course. But to be on, and I'm, I'm, I'm not making this up, to be on um, development for well, the first course I did, um, when I put the money in it, I got my first job at the university directly after I finished the course and even before I received the certificate, right? Um, and again, when I joined that course, do you think I had this job offer in my mind? No. And because, and the reason why I'm saying that is because some people think this way. They keep saying to, to themselves, no, 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 I'm not going to start my professional development until I see the job. Well, my friend, the job would not come unless you're good. <laughs> so it's as simple as, as, as that, right? So don't play that game with yourself because it can help. Because I know many people, I've met many people in my life, and those people have been offered wonderful jobs, but these jobs came to them when they were not ready. And then they regretted that they were not ready. And, and, and it happened in front of, of my eyes a lot, a lot. It happens a lot. So do not wait for an opportunity to come, okay? And then you start preparing yourself. You have to be ready. So when the opportunity comes, you're the one who takes it, okay? So, so this is my advice here. So even with, and remember, and I would say, I would say something, when you don't have money, okay? And, and, and pray and ask God to give you money and to help you. And unless this, and until this happens, you work hard, okay? And you read, you do your job, and then God will interfere and help you as long as you're doing your job, inshallah, right? Okay, so that, that's the part about money here. Another reason some teachers, you know, don't continue their professional development friends Okay, and um, to be honest, uh, let me say that friends like are big problems mm -hmm. sometimes because sometimes when you when you don't have the right friends, um, you end up you know like uh, being lazy and you don't know nothing, right? For example, um, someone is asking me in the chat box. Um, okay, well, I will stop the questions in the chat box. Questions are in the end, okay, because I cannot stop the session and answer questions now. Okay, so um, I'm really sorry for that, but I will answer all questions at the very end of the session, as I said. Right, so back to business. Again, friends. Now, what is the problem with friends? Like sometimes you meet that friend and he keeps telling you, okay, what would you do with your professional development anyway? 
uh, what did those people who st study and, and take courses, you know, I mean, what would they do with that? And again, I mean, and, 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 and this is really effective because those people can set you in a mood when you do nothing, my friend, really nothing. You, you, you wouldn't take a step forward. I have been there. And actually, to be honest, you know, I, I alienate myself from those people. So I don't sit with them. I don't talk with them. I don't listen to them. And you wouldn't believe how many times in my career I've heard such a statements like, why are you doing this? What would you do with it? But why, why are you doing um, Delta module one? What would you do with it? You know, what would you do with this course? You know, what is the benefit? You just, you know, uh, you get paid 35 Egyptian pounds per hour. And, you know, um, so what are you doing with that? What, 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 you know, what is the reason? And again, if you listen to those people, my friend, you will keep it still. You will not move forward. It's, it's, it's nearly impossible. So please keep those people away from your life they, they don't help and believe me if they were successful they wouldn't have been where they are now right so so when you talk to someone make sure you're talking to the right person you see what i mean like you don't go to someone who is unable to help himself i'm sorry to put it that way and then you listen to his advice because this is not and those people are so many there's so many so please don't listen to such people and i would go to reason to the final reason here i embarrassment and you might think some people might think is that is that a real reason that someone is embarrassed i would say yeah some people are like that uh, for, for, for so many different reasons like some people mashallah were able to to build a wonderful reputation in private tutoring and they hate to be seen as a studying you know they don't want their students to, to to say that oh my god he's still you know learning okay well i mean to be honest you know there is no embarrassment when it comes to professional development or learning i i am on a course now i'm telling you and i i will always take courses for the rest of my life you know because uh, to stop your professional development means that you think that you you you, you have it all and, and and no one no one you know uh, can get all the knowledge you have to keep learning for the rest of your life so nothing to be embarrassed because and and i've seen it especially with with the world of social media because social media sometimes can be a killer like why you start as a teacher on social media you start posting things people follow you you have a lot of followers and then after that you realize that your name is bigger than your knowledge and when your name is bigger than your knowledge that's a problem so but when you realize this you start thinking oh my god now what what would i do now if i go and start learning then people would say that oh my god Okay, this 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 guy um, whom we see on social media is still learning and following, you know, professional development, you know, and and again, and and because of embarrassment, some people don't continue and don't try to pursue the professional development. So for me, these are very very important six factors. And then we come to this um, important um, quote, and I say. Stepping, stepping into the world of an English language teacher is like attempting to build a pyramid. First, you've got to know how many bricks you're starting with. What does that mean? Well, I will say, my friends, it means in order to build your career, you need to know what you need, right? So you need to sit with yourself and think about what you lack it is very important to know where you should start from and i always say that an english teacher a good english teacher should have two wings okay now the first wing 
is language. So as an English teacher, you need to make sure that you have good language. And that's it, right? So this is the beginning. So if you think that your writing is not good, you need to find a solution for that. If you think that your pronunciation needs improvement, then you need to work on that. If you think your flu fluency uh, is harmed, then you need to do something about it. So it is very important that you make sure that your language is good. And, and, and developing language, you know, I, I wouldn't say um, I, I wouldn't say it's difficult, to be honest, because there are things, there, there are a lot of things that we can do at home, and we can do that for free, to be honest with English teachers. Well, reading is not for money. And you can, st you can start reading from your level. So the first step, try to know what your level is as an English teacher. Make sure that you sit for a placement test and make sure that this placement test is an honest one and you get an um, honest results about your level because it's very important to know where you are. That, that's, num that's my advice, okay? That's number one, right? Um, and then at home, try to have learning habits. Uh, what I mean by learning habits, like try to include learning as part of what you do every day. Like, like for example, I love reading novels, spy novels, Bond novels. So I read every day. I don't read every day because I want my English to be better. I'm not, I'm not saying I'm perfect. My English needs to be better. But I'm not reading for that purpose. I'm reading because I love it. And when you, when you do something because you love it, it becomes a habit. And when it becomes a habit, it becomes unconscious learning. And unconscious learning survives because it keeps happening over and over and over again. And this is what we want, right? We don't want you to start something and then you stop it. So if you love sitcoms in Arabic, watch them in English. If you love movies in Arabic, watch them in English. If you listen to the news in Arabic, listen to them in English. My advice is don't do something you hate in Arabic and decide to do it in English because that wouldn't be smart. Uh, and, and I'll tell you a story, um, uh, a mistake that I did before. Um, I, I remember a time when I wanted to, you know, develop myself, right? And, um, and I said, okay, I want to be able to read in English. Like, like, like I want to read fluently. And then look at what I did. I decided to go and bring al Ahram weekly. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> and you know how difficult the language is in al Ahram weekly, right? So for someone who is trying to build himself as a teacher at the very beginning, I brought al Ahram weekly. I don't read al Ahram even in Arabic. I don't read newspapers. I don't like them. And then I decided to go and read them in English. So that was very stupid from me. Because I decided to do something I hate in Arabic, in English. Of course, I will hate it more. Um, so, so, so a good way of thinking, my friends, is that you try to find what you love in Arabic and you do it in English. Then when it comes to speaking, many teachers, they talk to me and say, we want to develop our speaking. Sometimes you don't need to develop your speaking by taking courses. Okay, And I always say to teachers, only take a course when you don't have someone you can speak to. Because as a teacher, you're supposed to be surrounded by, by other English teachers. So agreeing with three or four teachers that you meet weekly or two times a week, and you practice your language, you, you talk about a topic in English, is, is not impossible. And it's not costly. And you don't have to pay any money for that. So that's something you can do about your speaking. And maybe at the end of this session, um, someone can be taking notes, you know, on mistakes, and then you can discuss them at the end as friends. Okay, and, and that's something that you wouldn't need to pay money for if you think that you're short on money. Um, um, and, and when it comes to writing, again, it's the same thing. You can help each other as well. Of course, now when it comes to language, there are also you know, um, um, other international exams that will be great also for the teachers to obtain and to have. 
in a CV, no doubt, but, you know, um, making your language better uh, just needs perseverance from your side and you decide that it's something that you can't let go as an English teacher. Now, the second important part in professional development for any English teachers is methodology. And if these two wings are wonderful, my friend, then you can become the most wonderful teacher in the universe. If your language is great, your methodology is great, then Bob's your uncle. You're a wonderful man because now you know how to teach and you have the right language. And sometimes we see, um, uh, you know, people uh, who lack something out there in the market. Like sometimes I see someone with, wow, amazing English. He's like speaking English like a native speaker. Okay. Um, and, 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 and sometimes, you know, I get impressed by some people. But then you look at his teaching and they say, oh, my Lord, what is that? You know, bloody hell, excuse my French. Sometimes you see shitty teaching. OK, so someone with great language, but he's in the classroom doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right. And the problem that here in the market, OK, I mean, people who don't understand, you know, uh, teaching methodology, sometimes they hear someone with a good accent and then they say, oh my Lord, oh my Lord, he's an amazing teacher. No, he's not. <laughs> because he's not going to inject his accent in your blood. <laughs> you need to be taught, my friend. Yes, his language is great, but how would you get his language? That is the question. Um, so, um, so again, and sometimes you find this teacher, teacher with, a, with, with amazing methodology. He knows how to teach, but the language is uh, right. And then you say, oh, my God, if this guy just had the right language. But to be honest, teachers who've got these two, those are teachers, are, mashallah, who can easily get great jobs can easily get high salaries. And people, let me tell you something. In this session, I'm not telling you rubbish. I don't sell people illusions. I'm talking about facts. I've never in my whole, in my whole life seen a teacher who is good with language and good with methodology, and he gets paid, okay, terrible salary, a terrible salary. Never seen that. I've never seen it, to be honest, right? Um, someone might say, oh, but I am good. And, well, maybe you think you're good. But someone else has to say whether you're good or not, an expert, right? Uh, but the idea, what I'm saying, never seen it. There was a time I was working for an organization, ELT organization, and I swear to God, I was looking for 20 teachers, 20 teachers in Cairo. And it took me three days to find them. Someone might say, oh my God, but there are millions and millions of, no, good teachers are not many. You're dreaming, my friends. Good teachers are stable. They have wonderful jobs. You just need, we just need to be like them. And then, okay, we'll be in a different place. And what I, what, what I mean by a good teacher, someone with great language and great methodology, right? Right. So moving from this point, okay, to language skills, and I guess I covered how we should be developing this. Now let's talk about language systems and grammar, okay, again, which is also part of what um, we need as English teachers. Well, usually, mashallah, uh, Egyptian English teachers are amazing when it comes to grammar. Like most of them are, mashallah, are very good. Because, you know, big part of our uh, studies, you know, um, you know, since we were kids, there is a heavy focus on grammar. <laughs> yeah, sometimes for no reason, but it, it's there. So usually, you know, many, many people are really good, good with grammar. But if you feel that you're not good 
with grammar as an English teacher, then two things can be done. You can, my friend, study on your own. There are wonderful okay, books on English grammar. And if I'm going to recommend something, I'm going to write you here, practical English usage, practical English usage. Uh, I'll write it in the chat box by Michael Swan. That's a very wonderful book. It works as a reference. I mean, for uh, so many English teachers, this is one of the references we go to all the time on grammar. It's an, it's an amazing book. And it's very easy to find, very easy to find. Also, I mean, the very famous one, grammar in use, and sometimes it comes in different levels also, especially the latest versions of this book, okay, um, are amazing. Why the latest versions? Because they have context. Um, in them. So um, this is also a wonderful book that also you can attain. You can study on your own. If um, uh, you don't want to study on your own and you want someone, okay, um, uh, to keep chasing you and whip your back so that you can study, then you can sign up for a course, okay, and then um, you can develop yourself in English grammar, okay? That's something also you can do. Um, also, when it comes to uh, another part of language system vocabulary and my advice would be reading 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 and again if you want to develop yourself as an english teacher and um you feel that reading um original novels is is is, is a is a big step now um because your level is not up to it and then one thing you can do and i'm going to write that here i'm, I'm sure that a lot of you know that graded readers you can find them online in different stores, you know, and you can find them everywhere. Graded readers are novels that are rewritten so many times so that they suit different levels. And you can start with that. Do not start with something that is over high over your level so that um, you, you're frustrated and you don't continue. OK, uh, and, and again, what is the relation between vocabulary and graded reasons? The best way to acquire vocabulary is to read. This is what actually builds someone vocabulary. And please avoid, because I've heard a teacher before saying to me, Shadi, I decided to review all the vocabulary I studied in prep school and secondary school. I have long lists and I'm going to sit with these lists and I'm going to memorize them. And bloody hell, if you want someone to forget something, give it to him in a list. So vocabulary lists, my friends, they don't work. They're horrible. They don't even work with our students, you know, so they wouldn't work with us as well. So don't try to memorize words from lists. Read, my friends, and then your vocabulary uh, will be great. Okay, right. Uh, moving to... Um, wait a minute. Yes. Moving to um, pronunciation. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's that's an important one. And the reason why uh, pronunciation is important is because it's a selling point here in Egypt and in the Gulf as well. Look, I believe that to, a good teacher doesn't have to sound OK, like native speakers. I believe that. OK, it has it, it has nothing OK to do um, with being a good teacher. You can be a good teacher with your own accent as long as you're pronouncing English correctly. And I mean by your your, your accent here, I don't mean that you would say. Uh, no, I don't mean that you speak like this. No, no, of course, that's horrible. I mean that. Your pronunciation is accurate, right, is correct, but it don't, you don't have to sound native. However, and I'm, I'm sorry I'm saying that, but, but the truth is the truth. What happens in the market that people like teachers who sound like native? Because they use them as selling points, attracting customers. You see what I mean? Um, like, so this is... This is what happens here in the market. And if it happens in the market, then we need to be honest with ourselves and we need to work on our pronunciation as long as it is going to be a money bringer. You know what I mean? It is something that is going to, 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 to bring you money, then you need to work on it, okay? Because it will help you. 
Um, so that is my advice. If you think now, the, there are two ways of making your pronunciation good. One way is a free way, okay, and um, and this is what I did, okay. Um, I, I I followed the free way, and the free way is I. I, you know, I, I followed, I'm, I'm not claiming, by the way, I'm not claiming that my pronunciation is good. I mean, don't think that I'm trying to, but I'm telling you about my experience, right? Uh, what I did is that, my friends, I started watching, uh, for example, British programs, and I started from easy things to listen to, then to the most difficult things. And because I studied uh, phonetic symbols before um, as a student at the faculty, so I, I, I knew them. So I started, you know, listening and thinking about phonetic symbols, and I kept doing that for a couple of years. So it, it took me two years, okay, to improve myself somehow. But it was, it, as again, as I said, it was a habit. I was enjoying what I was doing, right? Um, uh, when I when I when I when I was in the car, I was listening to British English. Um, when I was uh, doing something, you know, British English was in the background. So it was every. I, I tried to put myself in an atmosphere where I listen a lot and a lot and a lot. That's what I did, and I paid nothing. So, it, but if you have the stamina to do it, then go ahead. Good luck. If you don't, then try to land on a course, and the course will never also change you. No one can change your pronunciation in a couple of months, to be honest. You have to work hard yourself. People can give you the principles, they can train you, they can work on your mistakes and errors, blah, 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 but to be fluent, okay, with good pronunciation, that will need, okay, um, your concentration on your own, right? Good. Now, let's move. Function is somehow related to grammar. Discourse is more related to reading, right? And discourse is about texts and reading texts. Right. Now, my friends, let's listen to this. And it says here, speaking flawless Arabic doesn't mean you can teach it. Oh, I love mm -hmm. this one. Speaking flawless Arabic doesn't mean you can teach it. And, and this is what I was talking about before. I said, you know, having someone, you know, um, who is wonderful with English doesn't mean he can teach it, which is a problem that we have here sometimes in Egypt, where some international schools try to hire native speakers who are not trained to be teachers. You know, I'm okay with a native speaker who got, you know, his or her shelter, fine, because that's the teacher. But a native speaker without proper training will be like Shadi teaching Arabic. <laughs> Can you imagine that? I know nothing about Arabic grammar. How would I teach it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. But sometimes, some schools, what they do, uh, they bring, you know, uh, someone, okay, who is blonde, with long hair, beautiful, okay? So parents, you know, when they see the teachers are, oh, she's my son's teacher, okay? And then, ho, ho, ho. But again, what happens, it's rubbish teaching happens in classrooms. And, and look, I'm telling you, I'm not, I'm not telling you about legends, I'm telling you about things I've seen, okay? So these are not stories I heard, these are things I know they happen for a fact, and they happen in so many places. And and it's haram wallahi because um, parents, they pay a lot, and they get deceived by the looks. And and, and, and fair enough, they're not spe specialized, okay? They, they see some, so they, they assume that those people, they know what they're doing. And, but finally, it's, it's, it's just, you know, I mean, they don't know. I worked with, with a teacher before, um, um, who used to ask me before getting into class, Shadi, I'm teaching present continuous today. I don't know what it is. Can you imagine that? And that's someone whose English is his first language. But fair enough. 
If you ask me about the mustasna bi'illah in Arabic, I can't answer. I'm not blaming him. I'm blaming the people who hired him as a teacher because it's a shame, right? Uh, it's, it's not a problem that you don't know your own grammar. I mean, it's just, you know, I don't know a lot about Arabic. I just speak it. But, but, you know, but hiring me as an Arabic teacher would be a big mistake, I'm telling you, unless I studied or I did a TAFL course or something. So I get trained. Okay, now, so moving from this idea, oh, to the big thing. What courses do we start with? Okay, right. Let's assume that, alhamdulillah, God granted you money. Alhamdulillah, you have it, right? Um, and you managed to save money to start your professional development. Then where, from where should I start? Okay, and I would say, if we're thinking, then there are th the first step is what we call level five courses. This is where everyone who wants to be an English teacher should start. If you're an experienced English teacher, but you, you haven't had proper training, this is where you start. If you don't have any experience and you want to become an English teacher, this is where you start. And it's one of them depending on your financial capabilities. It's, it's, it's different from one to another. So if, 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 you, if you have, mashallah, the financial ability to start a level five, Silta, Sir Tiesel, end of story, one of them. Okay. The CELTA is by Cambridge Assessment English. Sir Tiesel is by Trinity College London. These are the biggest in the world, recognized everywhere, globally. You go up and down, people know these certificates. Okay, right? So that's, someone might say, Shadi, what do we need to take the CELTA or the Sir Tiesel? Do I need to do a course before them? No, 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 no. You can be balata in teaching balata. Look, balata. You can be balata in teaching, nothing in teaching, and you start your shelter. You need your language to be good. Okay? Right? Again, you don't need to know anything about teaching if you want to start your shelter. Your language needs to be good. That's it. Your speaking is great. Your writing is great. If you have these two, then good for you. You can go, right? Now, if you don't have, okay, um, the right amount of money and you want to start with something, okay, um, that would get you going and also with a certificate that is globally, okay, recognized, then it will be Take You UK TEFL, which is a course regulated by Ofqual. And I'm going to talk about what Ofqual is for people who don't know. Now, these three courses are regulated by Ofqual, but why CELTA and CERTISOL are very, very, very expensive. And Take You UK TEFL is not as expensive as them. Well, it's, it's, it's simply because, you know, um, usually, I mean, it, it depends on how reputable, okay, an organization is. So this is different from a place to another, right? Like, for example, we have universities here in Egypt. They're not equal, right? Some universities are higher in ranking than others. And um, again, and this, this is in different parts of the world. Some organizations are more famous than other organizations, and that's why they require more money. So this is what happens. And education is a kind of business, my friends, right? So people in Britain who learn at Cambridge University, right, they pay a lot of money, more than what others pay for other universities in Britain. So it's, it's inside every education system. This is what happens. That's why some certificates are more expensive than others. But all of them are at level five. All of them are 
recognized by Ofqual, and Ofqual is the regulating office of the British government. This is a government body that supervises all training programs in Britain. Okay, so then, then let's imagine now that we have someone who did a CELTA or a CERT TESOL and someone who did a TEFL because this question is asked a lot to me. Like some uh, teachers, they come to me and they, sh they say, Shady, what do we do after the TEFL? Do we go for CELTA? Or do we do some, you know, a course higher than a TEFL? And I always say, it depends on what you want to do. So, for example, for people who keep telling me we want to travel, like we want to go to the Gulf or we want to go to other places and stuff like that, I say to them, uh, when then go for the shelter, my friend. And that's what I say. Um, because if you want to travel and you want, you, want, you want it quick and you want to travel to the Gulf, then... It, it is advisable that you land on the Silto or the Certiso because people will pay um, high salaries if you hold these certificates. Okay, so if money is what you are after and you want travel for the sake of money, and money is honey, my friend, so then the Silta and the Certiso. If there is a job in Egypt and people tell you that we're not going to hire you unless you have silta or certisol, then I would say, yes, study the silta or certisol. Now, what about um, people who are happy with their jobs here in Egypt, they want to continue living here in Egypt, and they want to do something more? Then after the TQUK TEFL, then you can move to a higher level because these three are at level five now after level five my friends we move okay talked about the shelter talked about oh let me tell you quickly i'm oh, sorry let me tell you a bit about the shelter i was supposed to speak about that sorry right talking about the shelter quickly 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 well the cert the shelter is the certificate actually in TESOL teaching um, English for speakers of other languages and the universal questions question that I have been asked in my life over and over and over and over again what is the difference between a TEFL and TESOL and I'm saying that right what is the difference between TEFL and TESOL there is no bloody difference between TEFL and TESOL these are just names, okay? TEFL is teaching English as a foreign language and TESOL is teaching English to speakers of other languages, like foreign languages as well, right? So, and uh, CELTA is a TEFL course and it's a TESOL course. And CERT TESOL is a TEFL course and a TESOL course. And the TQUK okay, TEFL is a TEFL course and a TESOL course. <laughs> you, <laughs> so the names are equal. What is different is the level. It's, are, are we talking about a level five course, or a level six course, or a level seven course? But they are the same, please. Yeah, they are the same. Okay, right, good. So we're happy with that. Now, CELTA is by Cambridge Assessment English, which is part of Cambridge mm -hmm. University. And CELTA, quickly for people who don't know about it, it's a 120 to 130 uh, teacher training course. Uh, it is done intensive or it is done um, um, you know, um, over two months and a half, okay, as a part-time course. And we actually um, um, introduced the CELTA at British Year as well. So if you're interested, you're welcome, guys, we do that. Now, how many teaching practice do we have in the CELTA? Eight teaching practices. You teach eight times, six hours, each time 45 minutes, okay? Four assignments, okay, on a CELTA course. That's all in all. It is a 20-day course. Those 20 days can be finished in one month or they can be finished over three months, okay? So it's up to what sort of course, okay, you will take. Then we move to the following one, which is Sir Tiesel. And the Sir Tiesel is by Trinity College London. And I, one 
um, 130 hour course that's the third piece so again eight teaching practices okay that's what you do and you've got also four main units and portfolios to finish by the end of the course uh, so it's very very close but it's different in terms of assignments from the CELTA and there is some more focus on language, okay, in the CERT TESOL. Right, then finally, we come to the TQU UK TEFL. Okay, the TQU UK, UK TEFL, you've got 11 assignments, you've got eight, eight teaching practices, okay? So 11 assignments, eight teaching practices, and that makes your whole course. Also, it is uh, 20 days in, of input session divided um, over one month if it is intensive, three months if it is part time. Right. Now, moving my friends to the following step, which is level six courses. Now, For those who finished their CELTA or they finished, you know, um, their um, um, CERTIS or, or Take You UK TEFL, TEFL, what is next? Well, we have three levels and, and, and or three courses, and these three are also available for English teachers at British age. So one of, of them is Trinity Cert PT. That's a level six course. Now, what is Trinity Cert PT? It's by Trinity College London. Now, what is the focus in the CERT PT? Well, the focus in the CERT PT is actually on designing materials. And the speciality that we have at British is communicative language teaching, CLT. That's what we have here. So if you want to specialize in designing material, okay, then Trinity CERT PT. Now, another option is advanced methodology which is in the TQ UK Diploma in TESOL, which is also recognized by Ofqual. And also Trinity Cert PT is recognized by Ofqual as well, right? And in the TQ UK Diploma, you've got also about 11 assignments and you've got five TPs, five teaching practices. But each teaching practice in the diploma is for one hour, not 45 minutes. And the focus in, the, in those teaching practices um, is on advanced methodology, like you deliver a lesson, for example, by the suggestopedia, the silent way, uh, principled eclecticism. Um, you design a lesson uh, maybe using TBL, using EBL. So more advanced methodology is used in the TQUK diploma, which is, of course, different from the TEPO. Someone might say, Shadi, because this question is asked a lot. Many people ask me this question. They say, can we go directly to level six without level five? I never advise it. However, there are no rules. There are no rules that would say no. But I never advise it. Why? Because in level five, you learn how to teach reading. You learn how to teach writing. You learn how to teach speaking. You learn how to teach uh, grammar, vocabulary. You learn how to teach the systems. You learn how to teach the skills. You cannot just skip that and jump, you know, uh, to a diploma because you're not going to learn this in the diploma. People will treat you as if you already know this. And if it turns out that you don't know it, now who's in trouble? You're in trouble. Okay, that's why I don't advise it, right? Unless you're 100% sure that you know how to teach uh, the systems and the skills in English language in a wonderful way, okay, then yes, fair enough, go ahead. Right, then people who are, the last option is for people who are into teacher training and they want to become teacher trainers and then we have the TQ UK certificate in teacher training now what do you learn in that you learn how to design input sessions um, you learn also um, 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 how to give feedback the different uh, kinds of feedback you learn how to observe teachers in classes and usually uh, coordinators at different schools and also uh, principals 
uh, many of them want to land on course in a course like that to be able to supervise their team now so let me move forward so that i leave some time for your questions and i can also handle some of your questions level seven courses and level seven courses um uh, level seven courses this is delta or dip tesol or ma in tesol uh, or applied linguistics um, and these are these are mashallah i mean people who hold uh, these degrees my friend right um, and i would say um, try to land on a delta or a dip tesol these are great 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 okay uh, if you can land on an ma um, in um, a British university or something that would be it's 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 unbelievably expensive like it's crazily expensive but um the, but but if you measure a lot if you can land on it then okay good uh, for you uh the delta and dip tesol these are fantastic courses first very very few people have them and because very very few people have them those people are actually snatched in big shops immediately Okay, and usually people who finish the Delta and Dipti, so most of them leave the country and they work in different fantastic places abroad. Uh, that's why there are very few in Egypt. Not because few Egyptians have them, but because most Egyptians, mashallah, when they finish them, boom, they get jobs. I mean, I remember when I did Delta module one, it was only module one. Mashallah, I got a job before they released my certificate. Okay, I just got the report, I got the job, right? I mean, it's, it's happened with me, right? And then when I was doing Delta Module 2, I got an offer, a, a, an offer from a university in Saudi Arabia. I would have been with Ronaldo now, <laughs> because everybody is going there now, right? <laughs> right, so, uh, and it was before I finished. Why people do that? Because they say, we want a Delta or a Dip Tissel holder at our place, even if he hasn't finished, but because he's, he's started, so let's keep it in place, right? And because when you get your Delta or Dip Tissel, we can recommend you to become a CELTA tutor. For example, if you're working for us, we can go to Cambridge and say, hey, Cambridge, we want this guy to be a CELTA tutor. So Cambridge would say, hmm, Shady, in order for him to be a CELTA tutor, he's got to have module one and module two. Then Shady says, oh, yes, he has module one and module two. See? And also the same thing for Trinity. And um, to recommend someone to become a CELTIS or trainer is, is the same thing. He needs to have also um, Delta module one or two or dip TESOL, the first uh, two parts, and vice versa. So Cambridge accepts the dip tesol and the dip uh, and, and people applying for to become you know a uh, tesol tutor also the uh, they can have delta um, so again um, that's also a fantastic uh, step that you can take and um, I would say um, keep going what's after that someone might ask after that is PhD inshallah but you know we do call sahaw al umr right after that is phd salah nabi right however okay reaching a level seven course is amazing when you get there and it will reflect nicely on your career on your knowledge and on your money my friend okay right again all what i'm saying regarding professional development today it lies in a very important frame which is your personality okay so if you have the right personality if you're nice to people if you're good to them if you're good to your workmates at the same place then believe me professional development will work as as you know will will do will do wonders to you but if you don't have the right personality and your character needs modification in terms of maybe your attitude is not nice to people then you will struggle so much no matter what certificates you hold i'm telling you because this is a reality in the market nobody 
would love to work with a horrible person. Even if you have the best certificates in the universe, people would say no. So, so yes, professional development is important. But your character, your character matters. So make sure that this side and seek advice from honest people. Okay, um, not people who would praise you and say lovely things to your face and then behind your back they will curse you. No, I mean, seek um, good advice. Um, now, my friends, I guess it is time to take some questions, okay, uh, before I continue this. So let me stop sharing. We don't want this here. And um, again, I will open um the chat box so you can send me questions and then i will uh, try to answer you know as many questions as i can i don't promise to answer all your questions but i'll, I'll do my best so you can go now i'll try to receive some questions then i stop then receive some questions um i, I will do this in order to uh, be able to check all questions. Oh, someone is saying, how are you, how are you my friend? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, someone is saying, um, oh, uh, someone is saying it is, um, um, how old are you? Uh, is it too late um, to start? I'll stop questions now, answer these, and then open questions again. Let me answer those sent to me. Um, how old am I? Um, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I guess I'm 44. I'm about Bauer being the right? So I'm 44, um, heading to 45, inshallah, hopefully, ala khiriyani, right? Um, and is it too late to start at 29? My friend, I, I, I started in my 30s, okay? And alhamdulillah, um, I, I, I moved from, from being a CELTA reject to a CELTA tutor and um, a CELTA center owner and someone who established two CELTA centers in Egypt and helped, okay, in establishing two more. So, um, so don't be put off by anything. Don't let people put you, you, you know, I mean, uh, I, I got rejected in my life more than I got accepted for so many things, okay? But, but, but don't, be, don't, don't let people dictate uh, to you who you are, right? Just keep working hard and it will happen. And 29, mashallah, tafizu shababak, Allahumma salana, dik sakha wa lafi Europe. But, um, you know, so come on, man, you start, you can, mashallah. Um, you, you're only, uh, you know, supposed to change yourself. You're not asked to change the humanity. It's just yourself, my friend. Inshallah, you'll do it. And um, someone is saying, does it matter where I get the MA from? That's a tough question. That's from Ahmed mm -hmm. Ali. I would say, um, I would say, um, yeah. But to be honest, yeah, sometimes it's different. So, like, some people would not look at some universities seriously. Um, you know, I mean, because they would say, we have thousands of them, you know, because some universities some universities have bad reputation in terms of the sort of education they deliver like people know that for example pe people who study at this university um it's um, um just memorizing and, and writing and that's it like and to be honest the problem with the ma program that some people can be wonderful at research but they're not that good at teaching you see what i mean so someone can be very good at research and they got an MA and the, 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 they got, you know, an MA with, with, a, with a high, high grade. But you put them in a classroom um, because some MA programs don't have, um, a, whatchamacallit, um, a, sometimes they don't have a, a practical side. But for a Delta or a Dip Tiso, you can never pass without a practical side. So think about this, yeah, and, and think about, of course, the name of the university before you move on. Uh, Mohammed Ragabi said the prices of, of uh, the courses, please. Um, I'm saying, Mohammed, 
uh, all prices are available on our website and also here is a number if you want to inquire about any prices or um, anything then you can send to WhatsApp on this number. I'll open the questions again so if you have questions um, you can send me a present in the chat box. Mm, uh, I just open the question and then stop them so that um, okay I stop them again mashallah أنا فتحت الهب على طول الأسئلة طلع ما شاء الله. okay right. it's um so I say it's it's uh, it's, uh, it's important to hold the TEFL certificate if I know all of the frameworks and have done ATPs and got a very good feedback from an experienced uh, supervisor. she's a salt holder. oh if this is how you trust yourself then you can go ahead for a level six my friend. okay my advice uh, regarding not moving to level six before level five comes out of the worry that some people would not be ready but if you're that ready then go ahead man okay um muhammad kamil says and this was oh sorry that was dua muhammad sorry uh, muhammad kamil says do i need to be in the college of education or arts in order to be an english teacher and the answer is no what you need my friend um again of course, if you're a graduate from, um, you know, a specialized um, department, that would help in national schools if you want to get a job at a national school. Um, and in some schools also in the Gulf. However, you can become an English teacher if you have uh, C1 um, English language in speaking and in writing. So if your level of English is really good, then you're welcome aboard, man. You start doing your TEFL, you start doing your CELTA. I know a lot of wonderful people um, who actually uh, were not originally graduates from the Faculty of Education. And now they're not only teachers, they are teacher trainers and they travel uh, to different parts of England and they deliver input sessions to English teachers there. So, yeah, so you can be successful. Um, Right, um, Maryam Mohammed, uh, what to do to improve my writing? I would say, Maryam, um, writing is one of the things uh, that needs an eye to look at. So uh, it's problematic when it comes to developing yourself on your own. So my advice would be, if you know, if you know a friend of yours who is very good at writing, and is an English teacher, of course, um, you can send him a kind of emails and ask them to review that to you. There are also automatic machines these days and applications and programs that can check your writing for you. However, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure that there is a great development in that these days with the advent of AI, artificial intelligence. Um, but I, I believe an eye of, of a teacher would be very, very important. So you can do it on a friendly pace, basis or you can join a course. What we offer at British, you have an academic um, award uh, from Tech UK. If you're interested in that and you think you, you can't develop yourself on your own, mm -hmm. okay, so this is available as well. Um, someone is asking us, Muhammad Abdul Wahab, what are the proper steps that should be followed to be an IELTS trainer? I would say, um, uh, I, and look, I, I taught IELTS at the very beginning of my life. And I, oh my God, I, I still remember these days. I was horrible at teaching it, horrible. Bloody hell, I was just, I used to bring students, put them in class. Um, and then if it's a reading section, I give them a reading. And I said back, read. And then they read. And I open the answer key and answer with them. For God's sake, can you tell me what sort of teaching is that? Horrible teaching, right? It's not teaching at all. And I can tell you that I changed in teaching IELTS tremendously after I sit for a course. So um, I would say it's very important, yeah, to, to sit for a course on how to teach IELTS. It will help you, help you a lot. It, it will give you experience of years. And, and, and then instead of learning on your own and also um, uh, causing your students harm, then uh, I, 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 I would uh, recommend that you land on a course. 
We have a course on how to teach IELTS. It's available also um, on British by TQU UK Training Qualifications UK. It's called the Certificate in Teaching IELTS, if you're interested in that. Um, Mohammed Sakr, what if the teacher doesn't have enough money? Are there uh, any free recommendations to start with? Do you offer volunteering or scholarship opportunities? A pieces of advice for improving character. I would say that's, a, that's an important uh, question. If you don't have enough money, then we are in the digital world, uh, world now. Coursera, my friends, a lot of courses are there on Coursera. Future Learn, a lot of free courses are there. Webinars like these, every now and then in English, go to British YouTube, YouTube channel. I mean, I've got a lot of loads of stuff for free there. The frameworks, that, that these are kind of episodes covering, you know, uh, teaching all the skills, all uh, systems, everything. So um, I'll, I'll send you the link here. Wait a minute. Okay, British -y channel, where is that? Okay, here we are. I'll send it to you now, my friend, just one second. Oh yeah, good. Copy. I'll send it in the chat box for you. So you can find a lot of stuff here, and all of them are for free. Um, as for the second questions, uh, do you offer uh, do you offer volunteering or scholarship um, opportunities from time to time? Okay, uh, we announce things like this. So my advice is follow our Facebook and follow our website. The website is, and I'm writing it in the chat box: www.britishy.com. Okay. Um, um, now, for improving character, I would say my advice, listen to what people say. Um, and, and, um, and I believe uh, it, it's, it's a very good advice. Listen to what people say to you. Um, and if, if you think that um, people somehow uh, don't like you, um, for a reason or another, um, don't don't be upset when people give you feedback. It's very important that people give you feedback, and it happens. You will receive feedback from your coordinators. You will receive feedback from your managers. Um, all the time when you listen to feedback, try to start working on yourself. Don't try uh, to accuse others that they are against you. Uh, think about, I know that horrible managers are, are there, and bad people are there. Okay, but before you jump to that conclusion, okay, um, point at yourself first, right? And see what's wrong, try to work on it. Um, so that would be my advice. Mahmoud Ahmed, uh, please give us some resources and websites that could improve our, our, our linguistic skill. I would recommend, uh, I mean, something that I, a website that I love so much is learningenglish.com. Everything on that website is for free. It's amazing. Learningenglish.com. I love it. Okay. And um, they, they have some amazing programs. That everything is for free with the listening, with the recording, with the feedback, everything, everything, everything. It's, it's, a, it's, it's an amazing website. Also, I love Youglish. I love it so much for, uh, especially if you want to work on your pronunciation. It really, really helps. And it shows you British pronunciation, American pronunciation. Um, Australian pronunciation, so uh, it's really good. Ammar is asking, I'm not a graduate of faculty, I'm, I'm not a graduate of faculty of literature, education, I can't get a job in Arabian Gulf countries, what can I do? Though I got accepted in job in the UK due to visa issues, couldn't go. Um, this is Ammar. Well, I would say Ammar, um, the, the, my question is, um, do you have your CELTA or not? Because you don't say, uh, well, if you have your CELTA, then I will be surprised why you couldn't get a job. Because I, I guess there, there, there is a wonderful market for CELTA holders in Saudi Arabia. Really, really wonderful. Um, so that would be surprising to me. Uh, but if you don't um, have it, or if, if you're not qualified at all, then your good English, I, I, I believe, will not be enough. So I'm not sure because your message is a bit short, so it's not clear for me whether you have other professional development certificate or not. Uh, you said I got accepted in job in the UK, but due to visa issues couldn't go. Um, 
you mean teaching job if it is teaching job in 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 the uk i don't know i would assume you got maybe celta or Tefl. where if if you got these then i would advise you to try to apply for language centers in saudi arabia and try to apply from here you don't have to apply for a national school in saudi okay uh, try international schools and send them emails one after the other um now let me um open the um uh, the question again so you can send me now my friends some more questions and okay here we are so um uh, uh, Mohammed Sakra uh, is is asking uh, about the certificate. Yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, don't worry, Mohammed. Yes, we'll be sending, um, you know, um, everybody who attended. Usually, there, there there is an automatic sheet of attendance that is generated after I end the session immediately, and it includes when people joined and when people left. And we'll be sending these, inshallah, to your emails. So no worries about that. And thank you uh, very much. Um, um let me continue reading your message for that every can be a teacher of them and it's been excellent thank you so much um muhammad hisham is using my tuna radio to improve my english and have a nice accent will help me even if i don't understand everything oh oh that's a big one that's a big question look muhammad hisham um if you feel that what you're listening to now is is very difficult then my advice um there there is a website if you love american english called voice of america or voa this is for people who love american english um i didn't use it a lot myself but i heard it uh, i heard i heard a lot about it from um uh, you know those who love american english if you love british english then learning um, english.com they have graded listening so you can go to the tracks that would be easy for you. So try to start with something easy, and when you feel that you become very, very com comfortable with that level, you can move up. Okay. Um, Mahmoud al-Dusuki is saying the best grammar reference and a useful methodology book. Uh, well, I mentioned um, 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 a grammar reference by Michael Swan, um, which is Practical English Usage. I'll write it again, Practical. English usage by Michael Swan. I love that. So that's my favorite. And by the way, it comes um, in a form of um, an application. So you can have it as an application which will really, really help you. It comes as an application on, um, uh, uh, you know, iOS and also Android phones. So you can have it. Um, uh, your second methodology book, I would say, uh, Learning Teaching. That's a wonderful one, Learning Teaching. Uh, by Jim Scrivener. Uh, so that also a wonderful, and we always recommend it to people joining the CELTA and joining the TEFL, okay, because it's, 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 it's a kind of a book that covers nearly everything in teaching um, uh, for level five. So that, that's a very good for someone who uh, wants to start a teaching career. Um, then I have here Rwaida Zaytun. I want to say thanks a million for your great work with us. I've taken a TEFL course with you. And oh, thank you, thank you so much, Ruaida. I'm in the middle of the TEFL course, June batch. What's next? What are the qualifications to be a teacher trainer after five years of teaching? Okay, CELTA Certis or Delta. Is TEFL enough before uh, the certificate in teaching, in teacher training? I'm not interested in working at schools. Well, if, um, I would say if teacher trainer training is where you're heading, um, then um, move up to level six okay and i would advise you to do uh, the tiki uk diploma the off call regulated one at level six and then move then to level seven which is delta or dip to right um the certificate teacher trainer of course would help with any of these levels so it's something that's to be added make sure first you've got a level five got a level six and then you have level seven okay and then during um, um, this journey, land on the certificate of teacher training. Um, so that, that is my advice if you want to be um, a successful inshallah teacher uh, trainer. Um, then um, we have here, um, oh yeah, okay, so uh, some more questions before we end the session. 
last batch of questions. So um, I'll end with these, inshallah, um, with these questions. Um, and then, uh, by the way, um, and we, we added you to WhatsApp groups. I'll be sending you, inshallah, a PDF, okay, for this session. So I'll send you also the, uh, the PowerPoint slides to WhatsApp groups. So don't rush in leaving the groups until I send you the PowerPoint slides. And I will also send you a kind of PDF that would explain to you, okay, um, it, it kind of, it's, it's just a, a simple map of how you continue your professional development, right? So let me go to um, a question here by my friend, Mohanad Al Ali. What is the experience needed to be a CELTA tutor online or offline at language centers or any place? What is the benefit of taking a third PT course before taking a Delta course to be a teacher trainer? Okay, wonderful. First, what is the experience needed to be a CELTA tutor? You need first to be someone who's got a hand in training. Like you're involved in teacher training. That's number one, because that will help you a lot when we uh, when, when a CELTA center introduces your CV to Cambridge or to Trinity, okay? So they need to see in the CV that you've got experience. So that's number one. Um, number two, in terms of qualification, you need to be at the Delta level. What happens before Delta is not important. What happens before DIPTESOL is not important. What happens before the MAE in TESOL is not important. Which certificate Cambridge um, or Trinity would prefer, they would prefer uh, uh, Delta and Diptiesel because they have a practical side. The MA, it depends whether it has a practical side or it doesn't. So, um, uh, so that's in terms of qualification. The Cert PT is important if you are, if you want to learn how to design material and you want to be certified in that part. Uh, which is sometimes is needed in some universities where some teachers are asked to design their own syllabuses and to design syllabuses for the university and uh, also for publishing houses people who deal with books all the time okay uh, so that's where the third pp comes in um right abdul ghaffar he says um well, thank you, Abdul Afar. I was wondering if it is enough to have a level 5 TEFL to be able to be working in different association. I would say yes, yes, yes. The, the TEFL level 5 is amazing and it can get you to so many mm -hmm. different places here in Egypt and also out of Egypt as well. Uh, like um, Asia, you know, I mean, China, many countries, um, also uh, Gulf countries, right? Um, then the second question is, and what's best to take a starter course to be recognized and accredited and be an art. Look, I mean, there is nothing called um, an accredited IELTS tutor, okay? Um, you can be certified. You have a certificate mm -hmm. that says that you received proper training, okay, in how to teach IELTS. But the word accreditation is a big word because it means that th there is an organization that is responsible for the IELTS and this organization says that you are accredited. No, I mean, this is not there in the IELTS. It is there in the CELTA. Like CELTA tutors, yes, I mean, those people belong to an organization. Their names are there. They are known. Cambridge University knows about them. Cambridge Assessment English knows about them. Their names are listed there. And they can, nobody cannot work as a CELTA tutor without an approval from Cambridge. So, end of story. But this is not the same scenario for, for being an IELTS tutor. You can be an IELTS tutor tomorrow. It depends. Will you be a good IELTS tutor or an IELTS tutor like me at the beginning? <laughs> right? So, that's, that's the question. Um, um, another one, uh, Shadi, send the recording of this wonderful session. Thank you so much. I'll do. Um, I'll make sure um, I upload it as soon as, uh, as, soon as possible uh, on YouTube, inshallah. Um, first, I'd like to thank you. Uh, 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 this is Dr. Dean uh, for this beneficial. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. But can I ask, 
uh, if possible, can be paid in installments. Look, my friends, uh, we have different um, ways of paying for our courses. Um, again, I'll share the number one more time. And through this number, you can get all the information you're, you're looking for regarding uh, ways of payment and, and all the other stuff. Um, Hajar, um, Rabia, uh, I'm, if I'm working at a national school and I want to get a job at, in an international school, which course um, would be a good start? Well, uh, well, I would say the CELTA course is doing wonder, um, uh, wonders, of course, at international schools. Um, usually, many international schools, they hire people who hold CELTA, and then what they do after that, they give them internal training regarding their celibacies. So that's something that many, many international schools do. So that would be my advice. Um, then we have um, Reem said, I missed my last <laughs> My chance, do you recommend having the TESOL again or try another? Well, I missed my last assignment. I, I don't understand the quest. I, I missed my last assignment in TESOL. So, Reem, I don't know. Are you are you one of our students? Because I don't know what TESOL assignment. Are you one of ours? Because you said, do you recommend having the TESOL instead? Um, well, I, I, I don't know this. I can't answer that question because I don't know the situation. I don't know. Uh, so if you you can send me on WhatsApp, but send me in details so that I can answer this, right? Uh, Abdul Rahman Saad, what is your opinion about TESO, Arizona University from Costa mm -hmm. I heard a lot of positive comments about the course, right? Um, if, if the question is about um, finding jobs, then you would need uh, courses like the ones I mentioned. You would need the CERT TESOL, you would need the CELTA, or you, or you would need uh, the TQUK TEFL. Okay? Uh, but in terms of knowledge, I guess it's a very wonderful course in terms of the knowledge it gives you. Is it enough to find or to land on a good job? I would say, um, my, and that's my humble opinion, I would say no, not, not yet. No, not enough. Right? Um, question is what should I do to be a good TESOL trainer for teamwork uh, first you should be higher than level five you should be okay right um, you can't be at the same level and and you're a teacher trainer you have to have a level okay higher um, so let me give you a, a quick example uh, with teachers right when you teach the elementary level where does your knowledge stop? Does it stop at the elementary level or it exceeds the elementary level? Of course it exceeds it. You're an English teacher. You're kind of B2 or C, C1, right? So you're higher, higher, higher than the elementary level. And, and it's the same in teacher training. You cannot be at level five, like all what you did in your life is a TEFL course, and then you become a teacher trainer. Because it means that that's, that's all the knowledge you have. You see what I mean? Right. So first, make sure that you do a level six course or a level seven course. OK, that's number one. Number two, know how to train. So try to land on um, um, a certificate in teacher training. OK, so this is what you need to do. Um, Muhammad, what should I do to be a good? Oh, yes, that's it. And then Muhammad Sarai, mm -hmm. I jump from level five to level seven with self-development because um, saving is hard. Well, you can. Nobody would say no. Okay, study hard, and then yes, it's possible. Okay, as I said, no, nobody would say no. It's just a matter of how much ready I am. Right. Um, then Summer, um, she's saying, how can I improve myself as a math teacher? Is CELTA good for math teachers? I, I would say no, CELTA is for English teachers, not for math teachers. But as a math teacher, uh, teacher, what you can do uh, at the beginning, that make sure that your English, your level of English language is really good. And, and that's my advice. So um, I would say um, try uh, to, to, to work on uh, international exams, like the IELTS. Uh, recently, we have the JESSE exam, 
um, on our website. It's available and we made it available in Egypt now. The Jesse exam is the only graded speaking e exam in the world. And it is by Trinity College London and it is recognized by all. Okay, so try to hold a language certificate that says that your English is great, top notch. Okay, that would help you a lot with teaching, right? Um, another question from um, this is who are, yes, Ala Aid. Um, and then one more question, and then we end the session, inshallah. So, Alette says, is it better to study four years in a College of Arts English department or self-study for accredited <laughs> certificates? That's okay. I would like to change my career path. I'm already a teacher, but not English teacher. I would say, look, my friend, what I would say, if, if my son asked me that question, I would say, don't waste four bloody years of your life okay to finish them and so that you have to do a TIFL course an assaulted course a certis course okay so move ahead okay and join one of these courses okay right yeah okay so that would be my advice okay in these four years my friend you can finish in in three months a TIFL course and after that you can land on an ma and finish it in two years. What would, so why why would you waste your time? Make sure just your English is great. That that's what I would say. Uh, what is the next step after uh, listening? Uh, you know, after after listening. Well, I would say, if your question means um, that when you listen a lot, okay, uh, I would say try to grade your listening. Move from a level higher than the other. And also make sure that at the same time you're speaking, okay, uh, with other people, so that you develop your speaking as well. Uh, my friends, um, uh, it was really lovely meeting every and each one of you. Um, thank you, thank you so much for attending this session. And sorry if I took uh, a bit more time than planned. I guess I'm nine minutes late. Um, and I was really happy to see all of you. I wish. I was able to turn on the mics and to hear you speaking to me, but you know, mashallah, we, we started at like kind of 400 people and more here in the room. Now we're about 300, so it, it would have been impossible. Uh, so um, I, usually I'm not used to speaking like that for a long time. I'm used to giving people tasks to do in breakout rooms, and but, but again, it's just because of the nature of this session. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, good luck, and as I said, um, uh, stay in the in the WhatsApp groups because we still um, we're going to send you inshallah the slides. We're going to send you a PDF related to this session, um, and also to follow up with us uh, regarding certificates. Right? Um, thank you so much. Bye bye.